what's good, y'all? And welcome to my review for this week's episode of My Hero Academia Season 7. As you guys can tell, the audio sounds a lot better again because I'm finally back to my old setup. I have finally fixed my laptop, man, and oh, do I miss it being able to edit videos in Premiere on this thing. So we're back. We're back to the old setup. Y'all are back to hearing me click my mouse as I'm scrolling through the episode while I'm in the middle of recording it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you guys can actually hear once I put the gameplay in it, but when I'm recording the audio by itself, I can definitely hear my mouse clicking. I don't know if you guys could ever hear when I, once I put the Hero Waka uh, Ultra Rumble gameplay on top of it. But yeah, man, we're back to the old setup, man. Thank Christ. I found the BitLock uh, passcode or whatever it needed to get my computer back up. And yeah, we're back up and running, guys. Everything seems to be fine. I seriously need to get the overheating issue on this computer fixed before it does any serious damage to this thing. Uh, but yeah, man. This, this, this episode was easily a top 10 best episodes of the entire season. Like last week I argued, I was wondering, I was kind of wondering whether or not I would consider this a top 10. Ep this is this will be one of the top 10 greatest episodes of the entire series. This one is 1000% in that top 10, man. This episode was so incredibly well animated, well directed. The sound work here, the effects work in this episode. My God, the voice acting from, of course, the Seiyus was incredible, especially Endeavor, Bakugo, man. Oh my God, I cannot wait to hear this in the dub with the dub cast, man. Once we get Patrick Seitz in there, Clifford, you guys know Trina, uh, for Jiro, man. I cannot wait to hear the dub cast for this episode, man. And once this episode uh, finally releases in the English dub. But yeah, man, we also got the new OP and ED, which we'll obviously be talking about as well as this review. It'll probably end up being a bit of a longer one. Probably wouldn't be as brought this video to be 30 minutes. But yeah, man, let's just jump right into the actual episode and, of course, the OP as well. Now, the episode starts the episode off with, based after the initial recap of the episode, we actually get to the OP properly. And oh my god, this OP, man, like, after listening to this song, this OP, a couple times, right before, once before, obviously, when I was watching the episode, and then a couple times right before I started recording, um, just to, right before I started recording, just to see, like, okay, let me like, actually look at this and see what I want to talk about and everything, man. I love this OP more and more, and the song I also love. This is probably... A top five OP of the entire, maybe even top three. Visually, this might be my favorite. I think before that, I said my visually my favorite OP was the first season six OP. Might have been the second season six OP just because of the comic book uh, aesthetic of it, man, which looked absolutely incredible. Um, I think that might still be number one. If not, this is probably tied with number one, if not number two. I absolutely adore the visual of this OP, and I know why that is. And I want to give a massive shout out to one of the animators that worked on this episode, man, which is of course Haruka, Haruka Ida. She is the she was the storyboard artist for this episode, as well as the ED, which I think stands for effects director in this content. Maybe that's episode director. Not entirely sure. You guys know I'm not the. I am learning the ways of animation and all that jazz. But not only did she do the storyboard for this OP and obviously worked on this one as well, she also did the illustration, we got this confirmation as well, that she did the illustration for the new OP jacket that's going to be coming with this song, man. Oh my god. Bro, I need to talk about the covers, the dust jackets, whatever the fuck these things are called. The cover art for the OP and the ED for the new, for the second floor of Hiroaba. I need to talk about these. And if I remember, I'll put them up on screen, man. I'll put uh, Haruka Ida's tweet when she said, like, hey, I'm the one that did this one, blah, 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 that she posted on Twitter. These look amazing. But like, obviously, yes, as an easy ultra shipper, I'm like, oh my god, they both got the dust egg. They look so fucking cool, blah, 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 blah. This is Pete. But even if you discount the shipping aspect, uh, of this and just look at them by themselves as just like your know, artwork that's going to be the dust jackets or whatnot for the CDs of the OP and the EV man. These, this is some of the best artwork I've seen coming out of this series, man. And like this, especially the OP one, man. My god, man. Haruka is such a talented, such a talented animator, man. She's easily one of the best animators working on Hero Walk now. I don't know how long she's been on the series, she's more of a recent one, or she's been around since, like, the early days of Season 1, Season 2, or Season 3, around that area or not, man. But regardless of that, she's amazing. I don't know if she did the ED as well. No, so far, nothing has come out of who did the ED jacket, if she did as well. I think that was probably done by a different animator, but, my god, man. This is the one of Izuku, man. Looks absolutely uh, incredible, man. Jesus Christ, like... You guys can see the artwork on your screen, but I remember to put it in there while I'm actually editing the review, man. Just, like, it's peak, man. Like, I, 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 like, I don't even collect CDs, and I might have to grab these. No lie, man. I would honestly might have to grab these CD dust jackets just to have the artwork in person and everything, because it looks, it looks so amazing, man. Like, oh, my God. Like, like I said, not even discounted the Isa Ocha thing, maybe the Isa Ocha, just by themselves, man, they are 
absolutely uh, incredible pieces of artwork, man. As I, as I said, Haruka, Haruka Ida was the was the, was the storyboard artist for this ED for this piece. She was also the um, I believe she also worked on. I don't know if she directed that one as well. It was also just a storyboard artist for it, but she also worked on the Saiyans and Six uh, first ED as well. And I think you guys can tell her style with it, with the way both those EDs are uh, both uh, the the opening ED she worked on both of them. But yeah. This OP looked absolutely incredible, man. I love how we start up with Izuku and with Izuku and Shigaraki switching between their various forms throughout the entire series, up leading up to their current forms. At the end, I thought that was a really nice touch, man. We get some really nice shots of All for One. We get some nice shots of All, of all Might. We of course get Toga and Uraka, man. Which oh my God, I am so excited for their fight, man. We get this really nice shot of Dobby with Endeavor in the background. And like I said, the visuals in this OP are incredible. Like art, like visual, like purely visual speed, not even conclusion. Not, not even kind of the song and everything, man. This is my, arguably my f my favorite OP visual. Like, like I said, it might not be number one because of the comic book one from the first season six OP, but this one is definitely a close second. We get some nice shot Todoroki as well. We get some really cool shots of Spinner with the various Hetromorphs. We see Shoji without his mask. Which looks very interesting, man. We don't really get a clear look at it, but we see Shoji without his mask and like him holding somebody's hand, man. Like also, we also get this amazing shot of Todoroki with um, fucking up um, Ray, uh, Natsuo, and um, some of it to forget the older sister's name. <laughs> I but the rest of the Todoroki family in the background, man. We get this really nice shot of Stain where like he's pulling out a sword and you can see a glow coming from his blade, man. It looks absolutely like, I love the look of this OP, man. I love the little like effects. I don't know what you would describe the way that uh, what what you would call this to what, with how her her OPs and her EDs look like in Hirawaka, man, but I just love that look she has with her with the things with the Hirawaka things uh, that she's worked on, man. They all look absolutely Absolutely, just spectacular. We actually get to see the hero that 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 retired at the, at the midpoint of season six. Who I forget the dude's name, bulldozer guy, whoever he was. There were times we see him lifting some Chevy shit up. So it looks like we might be seeing him sometime later on in this season as well. Of course, we also see Toga and Uraka fighting as well, which obviously makes me think we're probably, which I like, I think that'll probably be around, like around that area is probably where the season's going to end, is, especially with the shorter uh, episode count. Most of the time that might be ending around there, if not a little after that, man. But I, I do believe we will be getting the Toga and Uraka fight this season, man. Oh my god, I can't wait to see that, man. And we see her dress up as, t and we also see her like dress up as twice, so it looks like she, this is where she finally sucks to twice as blood to fight off against Uraka, which I've been, which I've really cool man we get this real oh oh i didn't see this yo yo we see mech might in the op man I, I i almost missed this man i almost missed i almost missed this when i was well i was just like just happened to land on the right shop man but oh we see mech might in there as well oh that is gonna be hype man like that whole cut, man, right there when all for one just like fires a laser and we see Mech Might charging after him. I'm like, oh my god. And Mech Might looks absolutely incredible, man. Iron Might, whatever you want to call him. Um, oh my god, that is going to be like. <laughs> I have a, I have a really bad feeling that's where the season is gonna end with the with the All Might met maybe right as when, like right when their fight starts as one massive fuck you to us at the audience man. Oh, I hope it doesn't end right there man because that is going to be the absolutely that is gonna be the absolute cruelest cliffhanger ever man to end it right there man right before the fight actually ends but right before the start fight begins man but hopefully we'll get to see at least a little bit of the fight in the at the end of season seven and we won't have to wait till season eight or a movie um depending on how this ends up getting adapted because i saw somebody mentioned that like season eight would only have to be like 12 episodes because you guys know the manga is ending i had like four chapters but i think it's like three now man which i'm not ready to say goodbye to the series yet man and it sucks to know that it is like hard to accept that the anime is now officially on borrowed time man and just like I ain't ready for this series to end, man. This series means too much to me, but, you know, we, here we are, man. Here we are. But anyway, man. So I saw some people mention that maybe this could be just with the SB 12 episodes, or they could just do this all as, like, one movie uh, for the final, for, like, first season, for what would be season eight. So I guess we'll wait and see on that front, bro. Yeah, man. Like, oh, my God. That cut looks to me. We also get this really nice shot of Dobby as well with, like, it's purple. He looks like he has purple flames now, which looks really cool. Man. And the song, man, is really fucking clean. I've, I'm really starting. Like, the more I listen, the more I like the song, the more times I hear it, man. And we ended off with with, e, with young Izuku rushing towards Shigaraki. And then we see Izuku growing up and everything in this current design, man. Just, like, 
a phenomenal OP, man. I just love the look of it, man. Like, Haruka is such a talented anime, man, man. Like, thank God she's working on this earth, man, because, oh my god, she is so good, man. Like, there are so many amazing shots in this OP, man. This whole OP is a feast for the eyes, man. Like, ugh. So good. I can't wait. I cannot wait to see where this goes, man. To see the rest of the season, man. Once we get, especially, especially once we get to like around the end of the season, and we do get to Toga and Uraka fight, maybe Mech Might or Iron Might uh, against All for One, hopefully, man. Because these cuts in the OP man both look spectacular, man. So I'm looking forward to seeing see the actual anime itself, man. I just love the OP. Man. But anyway, I've rambled on long enough. That's my thoughts on the OP man. It looks fucking incredible. So we start the episode off right where we left off last with Jiro possibly losing an ear? I don't know if she's actually like fully lost her ear, like whatever what happened with that whole thing, but yeah, she got messed up pretty badly. But then even with Jiro's ears like on her right side, like her ear bleeding and losing an ear, that does not stop her from shit talking all for one. Saying what you say about fear, strength, weakness being special. I don't care, it's your it's your fault that all my friends are crying right now. As she uses her other speaker from her good ear that actually does still work to fire off to fire off an attack called Legato, if I'm pronouncing that right. Right right at all for one, which stops which stops them dead in track. And now originally this would be nothing that would really stop all for one. Like he'd be like, oh no, there's nothing you can go right there. But interestingly some of the quirks he has start rebelling against him and stopping him from using their powers and just has to just admit it just makes him take the hit as Hawks goes in there and like puts his like one of his like uh, feather swords in the sound waves himself to I think maybe get to either like I think add more speed to it or more power to it to be able to finally break off all for one's helmet which i thought this was interesting man that how this was done that all for one is now having his quirks rebel against him and he mentions in the episode he's wondering if this has to something to do with new world order or the fact of him use having to use clones i think like clones of his of the quirks they had before um that now that they're finally starting that because then because he has a weaker straight uh, hold on them compared to how he did originally back in like season three or whatnot he now has to he now has he has, now has less like, less powerful, less control over them, and that's why they're able to rebel against him and to use him to you know, stop him from using them. Which I also gotta say, man, I also love the sound design in this episode, man. I love the little like teeth clattering, like teeth clenching sound they use for when Jira when she like when she grits her teeth, and then they use a sound effect again with um, with all for one during like this part of the episode as well, which I thought was really really nice, man. And so yeah, like as I mentioned before, Hawks goes in there, he fires off another attack to finally hit, which also looked amazing as well, um, as well, which didn't completely break off the helm, but it definitely did significantly weaken again. And then that's when, of course, Tokuyami comes in there after switching out his cloak with with Jiro's leather jacket, and then you know, Dark Shadow rips one of the sleeves off. We're like, bro, come on, that was a leather jacket, bro. That one looks like it was a good leather jacket too. You just casually ripping it off, bro. Come on. <laughs> Anyway, all for one charges up. All for one's arm gets bigger because as as Toby I'm in charge right towards him and manages to finally break. And manages to finally break the helmet off completely. Or actually, all or actually Hawks managed to chip a good chunk of it off, like half of it off, and then all and then Tobiyami comes in there to take care of the rest with Black Abyss Ragnarok fleet fleeting blow, which also we get an onomatopoeia smash in there as well, which was nice to see as well in the episode. That's what completely shatters his mask. And so, so Hawks goes in there for another final attack to take down All for One, but all and we also find that All for One, that due to his fight with um with All Might, he's lost most of his senses, so he's had, now had to get sensory quirks to get them back, and now he's able to. And he, he mentions like he had sonar, like what was like sensory. I know he said something about um, uh, it vibrations and infrared quirks, and because of that now he's able to perceive much more than normal human. So he's basically got radar sense now. He is basically all for one has become Daredevil at this current moment. I mean, but Horico said they gave all for one radar sense. <laughs> it looks like it too, man. Where you got like the sonar thing going on, it kind of looks like radar sense. I don't know if it actually works like radar sense does for Daredevil, but it kind of reminds me of radar sense with Daredevil without Daredevil is. But anyway, as all but anyway, as Hawks goes in the drain to deliver the killing blow, all for one finally, finally is able to free himself of the quirks that are holding him back. He grabs one of them and just eats it. We don't actually see him like much now, but we see ha, which also looked amazing. I love that shot of the when the all for one of all for one looking all shy as he's ready to chomp down on like this like will of a cork or whatever, man. It 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 looks like some shit right out of a horror movie, man. Like which horror coach he says he is a fan of. Shut up, phone. Oh, which looked 
was fucking amazing as well. But Hawks was able to dodge the tech as Endeavor ended up taking the hit through his good, through his like, through one of it, through his arm. And all for one says that percent that that persistence must have warped you. And then after that n madness, man. Endeavor with his arm now caught up in sh when all for one's like lying thing. I don't know what this move's actually called. He just rips his fucking arm off. Just let just like rips it off from the spikes that it's that it's been impaled by, man. And y'all will see this in my reaction to the episode when that finally drops, like probably tomorrow or whatnot. And bro, man, my face says it all, man. I was absolutely flabbergasted when Endeavor just ripped his couch. He rips his fucking arm off, bro. Like, God damn. Kind of reminds me of that scene in Saw, if you guys remember that, when the dude saw his foot off <laughs> from the first movie, man. Like, yeesh. And then we get to see, actually finally get to see some of Endeavor's background, which is really cool to see. This was honestly probably one of the highlights of the episode uh, for me. Also, this whole Endeavor section of the episode was one of the biggest highlights for me. Also, if you guys can hear anything in the background, I got a fan running right next to me because it's fucking hot as hell out here, man, in Rich Grants, man. So we're in the midst of the summer, man, so it's just the heat is unbearable. So I got a fan running. If you guys can hear it, apologies if you guys can. Anyway, I also really like the transition uh, that happened right there while Endeavor is charging towards All for One. They, like, zoom into his eye, and that transitions out to the back to the, to the backstory where Endeavor, uh, see, where Endeavor sees, him, sees uh, his younger self as he's like on the floor, which honestly, man, you know, I also got to mention this real quick, and I didn't notice this until someone pointed this out on Twitter, like I think yesterday or whatnot. Um, you when you would see young Endeavor, like really young Endeavor before he went to UA, uh, he looks a lot like Natsuo. <laughs> if you actually look at it, like they look very similar once you see how Endeavor looked like when he was young, real when he was really young man. He looked a lot like Natsuo, I have to say, man, which is something I didn't really notice. Uh, beforehand. But anyway, Young Endeavor tells him that he's even weaker now. Your position, atonement, mistakes, responsibility, they've exposed your inner weakness and lowered you to something that I can't even stand looking at. You weren't able to become superhuman. Remember your origins. And that's when we cut over to Young Endeavor, which like I said, he looks a lot like Natsuo. <laughs> I have to say, man. And we find out that his dad tried to save a woman from evil, but, he, but both him and the woman both ended up dying in the process. As uh, Young Endeavor so eloquently puts it, Remember your father who tried to save a girl from evil and ended up a lump of flesh along with the girl. Which definitely does make me wonder, and the episode never ex explains this, I don't know if there's been like any data books or anything that's come out since then to uh, explain this further, but I do wonder if Endeavor's dad was also a pro hero before him, or if he was just some civilian trying to do the right thing. I don't know. I don't know if the, the episode, like I said, the episode doesn't clarify whether or not he was a pro hero as well, or it seems like he might have just been some dude uh, that, tried to, that tried to help a girl from, from being mugged or whatever, man, but we never get to see that, man. Uh, but yeah, that that I thought was interesting, and then he tells him to remember his jealousy, his inferiority crowd toward the true superhero, obviously All Might. And then we see him at UA writing on the hero sheet his hero name, Endeavor, the name you took on that reflected your effort and subservient to nature. You couldn't keep your ugly heart together without showing off. And then we see current Endeavor start to choke, or like yeah, start to choke uh, past the UA Endeavor. You can't you can't be All Might or even Deku. You've only, you've only ever fought against your own weakness. As we see UA Endeavor, and as we say Young Endeavor now with the flame beam uh, pop up. And I have to say, this whole part of the episode, man, looked fantastic. After the entire Endeavor section of this episode, which I think it was like the entirety was like the eight part before they went to the commercial break, switch over back with Bothro and the others. Um, this was honestly probably my highlight of the episode for me, man. This is probably my favorite part of the episode, was just the whole Endeavor section. It looked amazing. It was so nice to see, to finally get some Endeavor flashbacks, to get some his origin story in there, man. And it just looked amazing. The voice acting was spectacular as well. Just the whole part of the episode was absolutely spectacular. The second half was obviously fantastic. It's over, man. Had some great CGI and the melding of the two of them with Bakugo and the others, man. We got finally got to see War Machine Bakugo. See Bakugo can turn into War Machine, which was fucking awesome, I have to say. But this is probably my favorite part of the episode uh, was with Endeavor. Anyway, he continues on saying, that's why you can't think about, any, about being reborn as someone else. Keep cursing your own weakness. That's the only thing keeping you alive. And then finally, this is when we see him rush towards, and then we get cut back to where we are now with Endeavor, rushing towards all for one, and man, and like, and then turns his now, is now, like, is now missing arm into a flaming arm, which does make me wonder if how this is going to work in Ultra Rumble, if Ultra Rumble obviously does well enough to keep going, um, which I hope it does, man, because I love the game. I haven't played it that much recently, to be fair, because I've just been busy with other stuff now, and this is now that I have my laptop back, I gotta get caught up on my, on the episode reaction clips, but... 
I love it, Ultron, and I hope that game sticks around for the for for hope that it stands the test of time. It keeps getting updates, man, and you know all that jazz like you know Shinobi Striker or something will like last for like five years, ten, years, almost a decade or whatnot, or BBS or whatnot. Anyway, main tangent. I wonder how this would work in Ultron. Like, would they make this endeavor its own separate character, or would they just give him a cosmic of the current endeavor that just gives him the firearm, the flame arm, man? You could do. You could probably make the argument for either or of them working, man. But me first, I would kind of like to see this endeavor get its own set, become its own separate character with a slightly different move set, man. With him doing like that, that hugging jet burn as like his special attack or something. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, man, that looked amazing. The flaming arm world looked amazing. And I, oh my god, the impact frames! Oh, oh, oh. always. Oh, I, I literally just like stopped on on an impact frame, man. Just out, just out of back on accident. And oh, oh, I came. Hero Walk is such amazing impact frames, man. I have to say, like I, the one I'm looking at right now just looks absolutely spectacular, man. And I have to give a massive uh, shout out to uh, Hideaki. Kaki, uh, Ka Kakita, if I pronounce it that right, who is the effects Adam, who is a, the effects director for this episode, man. And his work was absolutely spectacular. Apparently, the last time he was credited uh, for the Hero Walk, I mean, he's only been on the show four times, apparently, was back on episode 40, which was actually the first All My Versus All For One fight as well. So, the dude's been gone for a while, so it's nice to see him back, man. My God, his effects were this episode was absolutely spectacular, man. So he like punches all for one, sends him flying, and then uh, all and then all for and then um all for one finally like lets his shield down. It was like whew I was a close one as Endeavor tells him that defeating him is his duty when as he brings back the flame arm man which looks so cool I have to say but I love the look of the flame of the flame arm he's got going on there man. And then all for one's like close, huh? I knew I could dodge that, but he didn't. But he did. But he didn't think. They never thought someone like Endeavor would make him re, would make him relive the pain of when he first fought all when he first fought all might. Which, which man, I would love to see all might and all for one's first fight like animated and something. I don't know. Maybe we can see that in movie four. Your neck. Maybe we'll get a flashback back to that when he, maybe when all might sees evil all might or something. Maybe that can be its own separate OVA or a movie all on its own, man, after the series is wrapped up. But man, I wish we got to see we get to see All Might and All for One's first ever fight in something. In some capacity, man, because ugh, I would love to see what that fight would look like, man. Anyway, then we get to the then we get to the shot. Where all where all for one says or not yeah all for one says only heroes are scared as we see all as we see endeavor charging up his his flame his flame flame arm which I have to say man I want to talk about this real quick man um, this was something I've seen the manga panel for and my god the manga version of this looks absolutely incredible the detail of Horikoshi goes off on that one is insane man and I knew when the anime would get here people were probably gonna bitch about it because it doesn't look nearly as detailed as in the manga which you guys know is fucking impossible for an anime to match that level of detail because the shit's some kind of move and guess what that's exactly what happened. After the episode aired, I was looking through Twitter, and I found someone that posted this cut, and like, while most people were thinking, like, oh my god, this looks amazing, I can't, there were people like, oh my god, this looks so ass, they ruined the manga, ugh. I fucking hate the Hero Walk of Famics, man, like, these people just, they're so goddamn infuriating at times, man, but I'm glad most people are giving bones their actual, their fucking flower. Regardless, man, this looked absolutely spectacular, man, like, I love the way this looks. Finally punches Endeavor with a jet, with a vanishing jet burn all the way down to the ground, all the way down to the floor level, of throws around the air that are fighting on the ground, like, what the fuck, I thought you were gonna keep him in the sky, bruh! And, and even Hawks are like, like dude, why didn't you, why didn't you use Prominence Burn? And Endeavor tells them they can't use it over and over, and you can tell that did you see him go to switch the defenses of just just now he has to he has a kill we all said before he can finally use uh before he can finally use prominence burn to fully defeat him so he comes right back there at this point the pros know hey yo bro get out of the way you do not want his smoke and oh my god the animation here once all for one get we're well, not all for one never gets down there and grabs him and starts dragging him through the forest man which i have to give a massive shout out to uh taki ataka hero Komori, who was the key animator for this part of the episode, this was his cut, and 
great, great work, man. You did a fantastic job. The animation here looked insane. And like I said, and also, I also got to give a shout. The music that was playing here, man, was spectacular as well. Endeavor Say You was going off as usual, man. I cannot wait to hear Patrick Seitz's version of this, of this when the dub of this airs, man. It's going to be amazing. And so as he's dragging him through the force, all for one tries to steal Endeavor's quirk. And you know what this motherfucker does? He fucking heat visions his arm. Like, apparently Endeavor just suddenly gained heat vision. Like, how? Did he always have this? Like, could he use this whenever he wanted, bro? Why weren't you using heat vision before? If you could already always use this move, but why are you just now using it now? <laughs> That's assuming he already he already had that in his back pocket or something. Like, I'm like, since when did he never have heat vision? <laughs> and anyway, as and uh, so then Endeavor tells him your hands destroy people's futures, you bastard. And all and then and then all for one throws in the back and his face like you did too, didn't you? <laughs> Which you know he's right. And Endeavor says as much, saying my my mistakes led to Toya and stole the future for many people. The past won't go away. The anger, the resentment, and even the punishment all come together to create a future. And then and then this part of the episode I was told since this was another part of the episode that I saw the manga panel for. And there's something I want to mention right here. As he says, the future is a path for the young to walk on. That's why I must win, so that when the younger people walk that path. And we see Todoroki, and this is meant to seemingly be like a like vision into the future, like a post, like a time skip version of the Hirawaka cast. Now when they're all pro heroes, which definitely, make, given we see this man, definitely kind of makes me wonder of like. If you guys, which I won't get too spoiled because of what happened in the manga recently, but if you guys have seen the memes or whatnot about the, about what happened to Izuku in the manga recently, makes me think that that's not going to be permanent considering we have this. But if you pay attention very closely um, to this part of the episode, you can see Izuku and Uraraka like very close to each other, and it almost looks like they're holding hands. So I'm just saying, bruh. Y'all can keep y'all can keep gaslighting yourselves into thinking Izuku and Baku is a true romance of your walk if you want, bruh. The series itself tells a different story. I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> to be fair, we don't know for sure if they are hold, and, uh, holding hands, but it certainly looks like that from this shot. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, bruh. But anyway, Endeavor continues on where it's saying, I'll keep taking those on myself. I'll win and keep looking at Toya. As he starts wrapping his body all around, it, all around, all for one, and hits the prominence burden. Oh my god, bro. Effects work, sound effects, um, music, voice acting, man. This looked absolutely insane, man. Like, this this move looked absolutely insane, man. I love the, like, the, the colors as well that you use, like the shade of orange, once it, like, once it like, goes back to the other characters and then looking at it, man. It, it looked amazing. This was like, Probably my favorite part of the entire episode, man, was just this one cut, man. Like, it looked absolutely spectacular. So after Endeavor burns all for one to an absolute crisp, uh, Hawks tells him to get to get away. And then we find this is all a part of all for one's plan. And that he, he goes on and says, like, you really think I would do this without having an ace up my sleeve? And he says, I'm done with this body. I'm ready to throw it away. And then we get this very interesting shot. Very interesting shot where he says, where we see, where it's a black, where we see one of the corporals fall down to the ground with a picture of Aerie. Now, what could this mean? This could mean nothing really. This could mean he's used, maybe going to try and use the cork bullets next time. Maybe he's going to use one of the cork bullets on Endeavor. Maybe he has one of them on his person and he's going to like stab, he's going to hit him, and he's going to stab him with it to get rid of his cork. Or. He might use them on Airy, doubtful, because you know she's all the way UA at the bar at the UA barrier and everything. And that all for one could get there that quickly, unless he has one of his goons go over there and try to do it. Don't know, but I thought this shot was very what This could mean for the future, as he said. That's why I can try this, and then we see the shot of Airy with the cork bullets. Like I said, I don't know if Endeavor, if All For One's got like one on his person and he's going to hit Endeavor with it, or if this is something else, or if this means nothing, but I, I feel these cork bullets are meant to, uh, to mean uh, something. He says, did you think you, only heroes could be, put their lives on the line? As we see, but All For One either regenerating his body or regrowing or regrowing a new one right in front of our eyes. Either way, man ain't done yet, so yeah. And also, I was going to say the animation here looked really good as well. 
So then we switch over back to the confidence guy with Bakugo fighting off against Shigaraki with the others. And I gotta say, I love there was some really great use of 3D and 2D mixture here, where we see obviously Shigaraki's fingers are all 3D. They look great. The CJ looks great. But we also can see like Bakugo and like Miracle Air on the episode, like running along the fingers. And it looks amazing, man. We also get to see uh, Best Genius out there doing some rail grinding, like it's a 2000s Daredevil game that got canceled on like his wires, <laughs> which always looked pretty cool, man. So, and he's told everyone to don't stop. If you stop, you'll get swallowed up in a second. As this is all going on there, man, we see the guys trying to, like, trying their best to fight off against this thing, but obviously Shigaraki's able to throw these at just obnoxious speeds. And so, and as he goes on about his soliloquy about wanting to have, to have everybody, <laughs> this is was pretty funny where he said that he wants everyone to be equally exploited. <laughs> and, and, like, that smug look on his face, too, is just funny. So as that's all going down there, we finally get to see Baku get turned into Warpington, which I saw this manga panel of this whenever this happened in the manga, some fan art of it as well, around the same time I want to say. And it looks fucking awesome, man. It's Bakugo as War Machine. Like, what is there not to love, man? Like, Bakugo becoming War Machine is probably one of the hardest things in, in Hiroaka, man. And Horiko, like, I feel this is Horikoshi just going peak 90s comics with this, man, because this looks like some shit out of, the, out of like a 90s, like, X-Men book or something where they're like, yeah, let's give him guns. <laughs> give him, like, a bunch of shoulder strap guns. <laughs> It's like, this would fit perfectly in a 90s comic, honestly. Bakugo with all these guns, man, like he's War Machine. And it looks fucking awesome, and I will, I will not get around cool this So he is just blasting everything inside, but just blasting everything that he could possibly blast. And, it, and, even, and, even, and even Best Genius is even in awe of Bakugo. While he watches him just, 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 like, just, like, just like firing down on, on Shigaraki's fingers there. And as we see Miracle and the others try to give him some assistance as well, man, which looks absolutely which just like a fan of it and we also get some flashback with Bakugo um, as he says the disparity the disparity that's too great and misunderstandings and fear I took all, all that in a long time ago as we see ba as we see like flashbacks of Bakugo with Izuku with his various interactions with Izuku over the course of like I said all, all, all best genius is just in awe of Bakugo as he's just like as he's like as he's going closer and closer through and making his way through Shigaraki's fingers and then even best genius says great explosion murder god dynamite <laughs> Man was such an old Baco that he actually said his full hero name, man. You know he was, you know Baco was legit here, man. And then uses his howitzer implant cluster move on Shigaraki. Finally manages to get to him. We then get to the commercial cards, which you finally get to see Baco's new render, which looks fantastic. The Shigaraki one, they still use the same one, so they didn't update his render at least yet. That might change later on in the season, but so far they're still using the same render. And then we find out that the, business, that the business course of UA is filming a fucking documentary during the middle of this. They're inside the interiors of Coffin in the Sky just filming everything as people are like trying, or as people are like making sure everything works and everything, man. It's just like, <laughs> this was just funny to see. And bro, the hair on these guys too is something else. Like one of them, like one of the dudes trying looks like the Don, the Don Bratanis. The other guy got like this whole like fucking circular thing that's like that goes up like that has like probably an extra foot to his height man it's ridiculous <laughs> like what is up with that hair man and while all this is going on this dude's adding his own voiceover which first of all bro do not add your own voiceover while you're filming do that shit in post so you're in a controlled environment nothing ruins your footage nothing ruins your voiceover you are in control of everything at that point you guys may remember uh if you guys checked out my vlog i did when i went to when i went first went to hsu throughout my first semester there, i filmed I did the voiceover in post because I knew because it's because one I wouldn't look like an idiot talking to my phone you know in public especially when my parents are around but also just so I had just but also just so I was in a controlled environment and could do everything the way I wanted to and not have to worry about outside forces ruining the video you know what I mean so do this shit in post for God's sakes <laughs> and also why couldn't the business court give them actual like proper like like camera equipment like y'all could spare some DSLRs you could give them some red cameras some like proper phone equipment to make sure they do this right man you really had them go out there and do this shit with their phones <laughs> like I am you eh <laughs> do y'all just not have spare cameras lying around that you could have given these children that you have them going out there filming this documentary <laughs> and then one of the students that's there actually working is like why are y'all here kid like th that what she feels that they're filming a documentary she's like oh god this is not what we need <laughs> and then the dude says, and then dude gets all gets all pissy about it's like yes it is and then like bro you pay attention you can see like the sass on this dude too you got the arm you got like the arm on the side thing going on bro <laughs> he says like then what about the videos and, and pictures of historical fights who 
do you think film preserved them and for what purpose? <laughs> this whole part of the episode was just funny, man. This, this, this whole part of the episode had me cracking up. So anyway, we get back to Baco and he finally, and we find, he finally reaches Shigaraki. Korean hitting his, hitting the howitzer, clutzer, ever like massive explosion. And then next to all, and next to all, he's out. Tell moment to keep his eyes open. I'm assuming because of the blast, I would want him to close them. And he's like legit, like hold, prying them open with like his finger, be like, I'm not closing, I'm not closing. <laughs> And then we actually get to head back to the electric day, electric. And no lie, at first my songs was like, "Hey yo, hold on, hold on, hold on. There is another sexy redhead here. Welcome, hold on, hold on." Then we get, we find out her name is uh, what was it, Yuna? Haya, Haya Senpai. That was like the way uh, Kaminari uh, referred to her. So I did some research on it, and now and her hair is more of like a pinkish color, actually, not red. So <laughs> never mind. But she looks cool. But we actually had seen her before. She was in the uh, sports festival, ep the uh, school festival episode with uh, Nedure. That's so. Uh, that's where she was. So she's from Nedure's classic because and she also meant like did the did the what if Nedure's beautiful hair burns again and gets shorter and gets even shorter and that's when first off, I thought Kaminari was in a chair so I was like hey hell yeah they got my man a chair he has earned that motherfucking shit but then once we cut to another part to an, uh, another angle right at him he's just sitting on the floor <laughs> because which at first, like I said which at first, like I said I thought he was sitting in a chair which yo can we give this man a chair I think he's earned a chair <laughs> let the man get comfortable Anyway, my tantrums about redheads and Kaminari aside, um, uh, she's also wondering if, like, because she was also wondering because, of course, Baku's being attacked, if it was going to burn Nedra's hair. And, and Kirishima, Kaminari, excuse me, tells him that Baku is very, um, is very meticulous. He isn't someone that's going to do things without thinking about it. Because he, he brings up this example of when, he, of, when they're, of when they're eating. He's always telling Kaminari to keep his left hand on the table for some reason. I, I don't know why, but I guess maybe that's a Japanese uh, culture thing. Because unless unless Kaminari is left-handed, I don't know what relevance that would have to anything unless he's left-handed, which maybe is. I'm not sure. Anyway, if any of you guys are experts on Japanese culture, can like shed some light on what the hell he's talking about here. I'd appreciate it because I'm like, what the hell are you talking about, bro? Anyway, so then we come back to the fight itself, and then and and, and, and then Shigaraki says, "You can zen your emote, your explosion, so you don't hit, so you don't hit those around you." And then and that raises that their level to that raises their power to a different level. It's wonderful. That's why I broke it. It just crushes Bakugo's arm, just like casually, effortlessly, just crushes Bakugo's arm like it's absolutely nothing. And just and then basically just calls him a scrub, saying, "Sorry, I'm not interested in you or in your development." And just tosses him to the side like he's nothing. He's like, "Damn, bro, the disrespect to Bakugo." And so the other pros try to rush in there to try to help him out, and then. <laughs> Shigaraki, the always chose said, like, weren't you the one that said if, if we could just get close to his main body? And he says, getting close to me would mean that you would have to experience the power of all my with, with that body of yours. And then just starts condensing a bunch of his, like, finger things into a massive ball, into, like, a, a like clump of things, and just starts swinging around at the heroes that sends them all flying. And then we get back to Baku, he says, is that is he really that far away from me? And the blood, and the end, and the key animation on his face and the blood, everything, man, looked fantastic. And shout out to Baku, say, he sounded amazing here as well and we end the episode off with shigaraki tell him that you are the closest that you are the person's closest to izuku right now and we see izuku rushing towards him before we cut over to the ed which doesn't really have much really to talk about compared to the op but it looked amazing as well as well man i like the i really like the visual of this one this was probably my fa my second favorite ed because you guys know my favorite ed is the one from is the second one from season six man which was also done by haruka ida as well she also directed that one as well and seriously, like, honestly, Brad, like, I, 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 like, I'm the one from the Hero Walker, like, anima animation team and some of the other, but, like, she is definitely one of my favorites, man. She might be my favorite outside of the cube, man, when he appears, man, from, from, from the consistent members. Him, her, and Jason Yao are probably my two favorite, man. Like, they cook. Every time they're on episode, man, it's some of the best work ever, man. They've done, both have done such an amazing job with this season, man. But yeah, the ED itself looks amazing, man. I liked how they showed up the different characters of the UA, the water motif there. The song itself was really good as well. Like I said, this is probably my second favorite ED of the series, man. It looked absolutely fantastic. And yeah, man, I have a feeling I know where next week is going to end off at. What's going to be in that episode? If you know, you know. Um, so I'm looking for some series to see how that's going to turn out, man. And yeah. This was a fantastic episode, man. Like I said, fourth, easily a top 10 best episode of the entire series, man. And yeah, I, this review has gone on long enough, man. I'll be shocked if this video is under 50 minutes once I'm done editing it. <laughs> anyway, guys, overall, I give this episode a 10 out of fucking 10, ladies and gentlemen. As always, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, subscribe if you're new, follow me so you feel like it. Links are across below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time.